So if you have a sheaf, suppose x is a topological space and you have a sheaf uh, on x. So sub sheaf one see one, once you define some object in some category you have to define what is a sub object. So you say that this is a um, uh, how should I say? Hmm. Uh, I say x comma say k is a sub sheaf. If this k is a sheaf plus this k u, there is a ma uh, there is an inclusion map. K u is a sub object of f u for all u. Mostly, what you get, how do you get if you have a homomorphism, say sheaf homomorphism f of g, suppose phi is a sheaf homomorphism, then you consider the kernel of phi at u is nothing nothing but the kernel of phi of u. Now, because f is a sheaf, this this car this this object, this kernel of phi u. This will be a sub sheaf. This is a, this will be a sheaf because f is already a sheaf. So sheaf property will induce a sheaf property on the kernel. So kernel of any sheaf homomorphism is always a sheaf. So this is a this this is how you get a um, sub sheaf. I mean naturally. Is a, is a sub sheaf. Another way of getting is that instead of kernel, you take the image. But as you know, image is not always a sheaf. But you, it is always a pre sheaf. So, but you sheafify it. Then, then sheafification of image will be a sub sheaf of G. So once you take so now point so image of phi is a sub sheaf of G. So this is the after sheafification is a sheaf sub sheaf. So these are the standard way to get a sub sheaf. And once you get a sub sheaf, you can talk about the kernel. So if k is a sub sheaf of f, then you can talk about the kernel. Uh, sorry, co kernel. And what is this? This is the co kernel sheaf. This is f of u mod k of u. But again, the problem is that the cosh, when you do this cosh, if k is a sub sheaf of f, when you do to do the quotient, this need not be a, a, a sheaf, but it will be a pre sheaf. This is a pre sheaf. A priori, it is not a sheaf, but it is a pre sheaf. But again, you sheafify it. So, this process of sheafification, which I did not explain explicitly, hmm, um, is very important. Maybe I will do an exercise or something, uh, so, uh, some example where I will demonstrate how it, this sheafification process is done. Hmm. So this is extremely important. This process of sheafification. Hmm. <clears throat> this is here, and then sheafify it. So this is called co-kernel. Co-kernel of phi. If k is kernel of phi. Sorry, what I am saying? This no, it's not right. This is this is called quotient shift. Is a this is called quotient shift. 
quotient by k. So, like in the group theory or in ring theory, you have seen this, right? Whenever you have take a take a sub sub object, you take the quotient that also becomes a object. So here also. So, this makes the sheaves category of sheaves abelian category. If you are aware of uh, what is called abelian category, where you need this, this sub object, quotient object, and the home set, they should be a nice set. Because, I mean, if you are working with abelian group, then the home set should be abelian group, kernel, co kernel should be defined. Hmm. So, this form set is abelian category. So, I am not going to define what is called abelian category, but I am just and you need abelian category to define cohomology uh, the um, more uh, properties like resolution, uh, projective resolution, injective resolution. So, you can talk about the cohomology theory. So, you need abelian category is very important to do further homological algebra and study sheet. So, these are all words I am not going to explain what exactly it is, but just uh, mm. so did I do this exercise in the last time or I will just write it maybe that if you have a homomorphism of sheaf, morphism of sheaves. The following are equivalent. <coughs> Kernel of phi is zero. Phi p phi p is a map from f. So a map of sheaf induces a map of at the stock level. Is injective and phi u's are injectives. <coughs> hmm. So, this is A and the for the surjectiveness the following are equivalent. Image of phi is G, phi P is surjective. Hmm. So, this is not difficult, I leave it as exercise. So, as I as I was saying, this is a remark. This uh, if I if I denote this uh, x is a topological space, and if I denote this by the category of sheaves of abelian groups on X, huh, this is the category of sheaves of abelian groups. So, then this is a abelian category is an abelian category. So, what does it mean? That means that if I take two object A, F and G, home is an abelian group. Uh, 
one can define some with quotation properly sum and product in this category. The kernel, the notion of kernel and kernel and co kernel exist. Just now I define what is co kernel and co kernel of homomorphism, and then for any homo, this is very important that for any homomorphism for any map phi from f to g. Uh, if modulo kernel of phi, or oh sorry, is isomorphic to the image of phi. So when I say if image of phi, I uh, after simplifying, okay. All when you take quotient f modulo kernel of phi, this need not be a shift. You take do the simplification, and again image of phi, this need not be a shift. You do the simplification. So I should write tilde, but I just uh, not to make notation uh, complicated. So I just shift isomorphism. So always better to work with sheaves, hmm. not uh, pre sheaves. So, so, some examples, some more examples. For example, if, if you take x to be c, or c, you take the punctured disk c minus zero. The topology on x, you take the analytic topo with uh, with analytic topology. Hmm. Define OX to be the holomorphic functions, the sheaf of holomorphic functions. Define OX star to be sheaf of non vanishing. Holomorphic function. So these are all sheaves. I mean, if you take uh, any open set, OXU is con you consider holomorphic functions on U, and OX star U is the sheaf of all. You take non-vanishing. That means it is it is not zero. Holomorphic functions which are not zero. So first you see that these are all sheaves. So now there is an exponential map, right, from OX to OX star. So I will not write OXU to OXU star because sometimes I just write OX to OX star. So what is this map? This is if you take any section. So element of OXU, sometimes I'll say sections because later you'll see that they are they are section of some uh, topological space. See, in, in a mathematics, when you say section, it is like whenever you have a map from x to y, pi, uh, a section is called a map from y to x, mostly continuous. So x and y are topological space. So the pi composition s is identical. So the way this sheaves this uh, this uh, the the sheaf f you get is this theorem that most all sheaves you get. Are kind of section of some topological space. So the point is that uh, the, the actually the simplification process that if I start with a sheaf f on x, so I want to define what is f u for an open subset here. So what I do, so given a sheaf, what I want does is that you take the uh, disjoint union of stocks. This is called ethyl space of the sheaf, and you induce a topology on it. And you define, then you define this projection map. If I take something here, f, if it is in fx, 
so you go to the x. So if f f belongs to f x, so f will go to x. But one uh, should be one with little care. One defines a topology on this space. So then there is a natural map, this projection map, and which is a continuous map. Now, now the point is that f of u is nothing but all the map from s u to this disjoint union of x belongs to u f of x. So such that pi, such that if you take a x, it should go to the stock at f x with some property, some more property is there. It should not, it is not that, uh, it not so easy, but locally it should be, looks like <coughs> it has some more description and that is the simplification. Now, there is no vector space here, it is a Shiva abelian group, more general. Vector one is special case. So, this is how you can say so more all sheaves you get in this process. If you are given a sheaf, then if you take the space of sections, then this will this f this if you call f tilde u, this f tilde u will be isomorphic to this f if f is a sheaf. And if f is not a sheaf, it is a pre sheaf, still you can do this process. And what you get is the simplification of f. This is how simplification is done. Okay, so these are called sections. So, so now, so, so that's why I more often I call that I element of O x u are sections, sections over u. Or <coughs> so this is this is the map. If you take a f, which is a section on O x u. So, you send it to exponential of f. And if you see that uh, this is a surjective map, and the kernel is nothing but 2 pi i z, so constant sheaves, sheaf of locally constant sheaves is 2, 2 pi i z, I denote it by this, 2 pi i z x, say, because it is a sheaf on x. Right. So, these are, this is the locally constant sheaves. With values in 2 pi i z. So, what does it mean that for every, so if this is, so if I take a, any open set u in x and if I take a point here, I can find a neighborhood around x such that f is the constant, uh, the section in that small neighborhood is a constant. So, right. So, this is how, uh, this is a, so this uh, exact sequence, so this is the exact sequence of sheaves. This is the kernel of the exponent. Uh, this has a, some name, this is a very useful exact sequence, exponential exact sequence. Yeah, sure because it is a locally, see surjective, if you have some function which is not, uh, not vanishing. So, what you have to do locally or at the stock level, it is not, uh, uh, if f to j is surjective, you have to prove that f of p to g of p is surjective for every p. Now, if, so if g of p is like is like f uh, u comma f, and this function a f does not vanish. Yeah, you will get a non, non neighborhood around u which is non-zero. So now then you can talk about logarithm of f. So expo right. When you have a holomorphic function, if it is does not vanish, then you can have a small neighborhood where you can define logarithm. And that is also holomorphic. An exponential of logarithm is the function itself. So that is a log that is how it is subject. But globally, this is not a subjective map. 
for if I take z equal to z for example, function z that does not have inverse. So, this is a short exact sequence, but at the global level if I take O x a. So, this this is the example where the global section functor is not a exact functor, but it is a left exact functor. So, what I am saying that uh, see if you take x to be O x x to if you take this O x star x, this is not surjective. If you just take function z, f z equal to z, that does not have uh, do not have neighborhood. If you take a small neighborhood around uh, that will include 0, right, and that will be a problem. I can go very near to the 0 and understand. So, globally there is no uh, section. So, that is why this uh, this exact sequence this is the very low shift global globally there is no. Uh, so, this is this is this this is an example where it shows that global section functor. So, global section when I say whenever I have exact exact sequence of shifts I can apply the functor global functor that is not a exact functor that. So, the the, the right hand side what you get this is a h1 term the higher cohomology group and that is how things uh, appear the cohomology group. So, the one has to study cohomology of sheaves because uh, maybe you have seen this that if you have a short exact sequence you get some long exact sequence right. You, have you seen that such examples no ok. So, you will see in more it, it, it happens everywhere not just in algebraic geometry it is in in algebraic topology also you will see if you do homological uh, homology or cohomology same thing uh, it is gets here. Anyway, so I will not uh, go into the uh, any deep discussion about this, but this is just an example where uh, it is an example where you see that global section functor is not a. <coughs> Okay, so so but you remember this name? Uh, this is called uh, this uh, this sequence has some name. So this uh, this exact sequence appears. It's a very important exact sequence, and this has nothing to do with x to be c minus zero. You can take x any any complex manifold and do such. Just for simplicity, I took x equal to c minus 0. You could have taken x is any complex manifold. Hmm. So, this is called exponential exact sequence. This has a name. And in when you do further study of she, uh, you will see complex geometry or uh, algebra geometry, you will see that this has many applications. Yes, they are related. If uh, if you argue, actually, this is uh, principle. Uh, this is uh, called geometric algebraic and geometric analytic. So one is analytic geometry, another is algebraic geometry because. In another in shift of holomorphic function, your open sets are more. But in algebra, in when you study uh, algebra, only the open sets are less. But there are some principles which are Gaga principle. Gaga means geometric algebraic geometry. J. P. Sayer wrote a paper on this, and he said that in some nice cases like smooth projective varieties. Whatever you study, whether it is you study analytically or you study uh, algebraically, you don't get any difference. There is no difference. This is called Gaga principle. So hmm. When you study sheaves on those manifolds and the cohomology theory. So, if you want to compute some cohomology group, say if it is a some algebraic sheaf. A sheaf of regular functions, and you want to study compute it. 
then because of the lack of open source, of course, you find it difficult. So, but you can go to the analytic topology and uh, study the, the, so, so this is a, this, I need to, I need to say more, but I will just say that, uh, yes, they are related in some sense, yes. Okay. Okay, so I will stop here, I will not continue with this, but now next concept is what is, what is called gluing of sheaves. As I, in the last class I was explaining, see as is, as you have seen in mathematics, you define very abstract object, but after all these abstract objects are built on some local models and they are very nice. They are, you can work with that, right. So that is the point, so, so, the, so that is why gluing is important, right. When you do carpentry job, you first uh, make small, small pieces and then you add it, you glue it with your uh, either with screw or with uh, or, or some paste or something, you make a, you, you make the thing, right. It is not just carpentry, it, it is in any manufacturing. Same thing true in mathematics also, you are defined very abstractly and those are required to prove results. Because sometime if it is very if it is given very locally, you may not be able to prove anything. So, you want us to make it a, it a larger space, you go there and you do some, you have some more techniques and you use it and then ultimately you solve a small problem or solve the problem which you want. This is how the abstractness in mathematics came and this is very, it is necessary. Often, the small, the simple problem which does not need any abstractness, you need to, you, but it is solved using very, very abstract ideas because of the reason that you do not have tools, right, right. For a very small problem, you go to a doctor, but doctor goes, takes you to an operation theatre to do operation. But the problem you may think that it is very small, but it is not. If to solve it, you have to go to a larger, right. So, it is same thing is true here. So, so, so this is why, you, so this is the abstractness, gluing of sheaves or gluing of varieties or, so that is why. Now, you example take the projective space itself. The projective space, it is such a nice object. But it is an abstract object because there is no global coordinates. But you see projective space has some good properties, we will see. Many, you can do some geometry on projective space. For example, there are no regular functions other than constant. If you take projective space and you define regular functions on projective space, there are no global regular function. They are other than constant. Regular. Rational function, there are plenty. If you take an open subset, if you want, you do not, you do not have any algebraic function from your Pn to K other than constants. Okay. Mm. So, so more, so the idea is that you have u i, i equal to 1 to n <coughs> and on and u i on, on u i you have some sheaves f i's and you have some um, isomorphism. So, when I say restriction means the inverse image, ui intersection uj to ui you have a map and then this, <coughs> this is a finite A open cover. So, 
So, this is called phi i j and you define phi i k there should be some compatibility with this isomorphism. So, this is on u i j k. So, then so this is the gluing property then you can then one can construct this is a very extremely complicated process, uh, but it is very useful process complicated it, when you do it you you see there are many difficulties, but it is a very useful one can when one can do and when one cannot do there are theories. <clears throat> one can construct there is like uh, you can call it a uh, obstruction uh, but anyway let us not um, go into such deep things but one can glue one can construct or one can glue one can construct a sheaf x f such uh, such that f restricted to u i is ok. No, no, nothing actually any topological space. I have not talked about variety yet. Yes, finite open cover. You can do it for infinite also, but let us not bother about because mostly will be see in Zariski topology everything is quasi compact. So, you can everything you can write it as a finite. Your open sets are huge. See, this infinite thing comes when the open sets are become smaller and smaller. So, then the compactness is an issue, but here your open sets are quite huge. So, 